Oh, Jesse. Um, oh, I don't see it. No.
Uh, good morning, family and friends. <clears throat> uh, welcome, everyone, to the memorial service for Nehasi uh, Latumwa Dewa. My name is Mekan Kailahi. Uh, I was asked by Nehasi sisters to conduct this family program. I'm the son of Nehasi, whom Nehasi was named after. Um, we'll start off our program with the opening song. It's found in the insert, Falafala Maya Sisu. I'd like to ask my mom, Matia Nehasi, to conduct us in that song, after which we'll have an opening prayer by Emma Tuitabuki. Our dear Heavenly Father, we ask you to please bless us as we all gather as a family to celebrate the life of Nehasi. We ask you to please bless us so that we may have the spirit to be with us and comfort all of us, especially the brothers and sisters, all of Nehasi's kids, the grandbabies. <laughs> Fiola among you see. And his wife Agnes. Please Heavenly Father help us through the Spirit. Sweet. Gather here. Please watch over us. 
please guide and direct us and please watch over us as we be together as a family. We love these so very much and I say these things in home with her. Amen. Uh, thank you, Sister Nahasi and Sister Tutavuki. We'll now hear of uh, the eulogy read to us by Fili Mwala. After the eulogy, we'll hear from Hasi's siblings, starting with Latu Mwala, Anetu, Trihalamaka, Popo Mwala, Peri Mwala. And after they speak, we'll have a musical number by the Mwala, Leobah family. Good morning, brothers and sisters. <clears throat> Before I start, you know, I got I got I, I gotta, gotta tell a funny story. It, you know, it's nothing big. I was talking to Betty the other day on the phone, and you know, it took a lot to get these two pages down on paper, you know. Uh, but as I was uh, as I was contemplating and thinking about this brother of mine, um, you know, getting emotional and writing things and rewriting things and and trying to figure out what would, what would be the best way to represent this man. All I could hear in the back of my mind is this guy saying, hey man, don't mess it up. <laughs> so, for as, for as sad as it could be right now, I find hope and I find faith and I find strength knowing that I'll see him again. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Fili Toto Pau Mwala. I am first cousin of Nahasi, or Hasi as we call him. Hasi was born on January 9th, 1977, at UCLA Hospital in Santa Monica, California, to, to Mangisi Mwala Liva and Viola Fa Tuitavuki. The oldest of six children, Hasi was born a leader and naturally garnered the love and attention of most, if not all, of our aunts and uncles. It was hard not to love Hasi. Growing up in his beloved hometown of Los Angeles, many family, many family memories recall him as a funny, loving, and energetic little boy that loved to make people laugh. As a child, Hasi was naturally selfless and shared everything he had, except for his prized bicycle. <laughs> Auntie Viola would recall watching Hasi let his cousins ride his bike in exchange for candy or food. <laughs> this dude had a sense of humor from the very beginning. In his early childhood, he lived off of 87th and Hoover. And it was at this home where he built strong, loving relationships with some of his closest relatives. He loved being with Uncle Nahasi, whom he's, whom he's named after, and Uncle Halotiglahi. As a kid, they spoiled and loved him, and it was evident every time they saw each other. It wasn't out of the norm either to always see Hasi with Baby, Latu, Bo, Eleanor, Loni or Lupe. One thing about Hasi is that he loved his family and it was very important that we all knew this. He was always supporting his immediate and extended family, no matter the occasion. The last time I saw Hasi was at Auntie Emma's funeral in Utah. I knew he was sick, but he was a rain, sleet or snow type of guy. Nothing stood in his way. If a family function was happening, he was there with a smile on his face. He truly loved his relatives and family. This is what brought him, and, and this is what brought him the most joy. Hasi always watched out for his younger siblings as his mom tended to the daily chore of caring for the family and home. Hasi did whatever he could to help her. 
those same traits would carry over to his adult life. We would talk and make fun of each other, and he would claim that he was all of our parents' favorite nephew. In hindsight, I know for sure he was their favorite. He would always do without question. And he had and he just had a certain loving aspect to him that would make people feel comfortable. Hasi was truly one of a kind. As an 11 year old boy, Hasi developed a love for the drums. And as he got older, he had less interest in football and seasonal sports and more focused on music and developing his skill set as a drummer. During this age, he loved to attend mutual, scouts, and other youth activities. In the ensuing years, he would enroll at Losinger High School in Lawndale, California, and it would be our cousin Tupo that would introduce him to the love of his life. Agnes Agato. Hasi and Agnes would later get married. Hasi and Agnes would later get married on May 13, 1992. One year later, they would welcome their first child, Illinois, to this world. And there would be nine more to follow. Emasi, Envy, Ilima, Aviana, Nehasi Jr., Latu, Xiaoxi, Hiva, and Toru. The thing about my cousin is with all these mouths to feed, I never once heard him complain about providing for them. And I would see him work any and all jobs to support his family. He got that trait from his dad, Uncle Max, who was a skilled, who was a skilled contractor and a jack of all trades. Hasi's work ethic was second to none. After 10 years at Home Depot, he found himself back in the construction business. I feel Hasi found a level of comfort there. It was hard work, but he loved the storytelling. He loved speaking tongue to the old men and hearing how they wanted a better hearing how they wanted a better life for their kids. Hasi was the same. A humble man who always tried his best, never complained, just wanted to see his kids succeed. It was that big heart, it was that big heart of his that everyone gravitated towards. Yeah, his life, yeah, he was the life of the party, but we all knew, more importantly, that he was the glue that kept us all together. Consistently calling, sending texts, leaving voicemails and Marco Polo videos, telling us to keep going, don't stop grinding, our family isn't made of quitters. These are the type of things that I will miss, along with hearing his, his laugh and seeing his beautiful face. Hasi also loved his grandchildren, and it was his favorite to be with, to be with all eight of them. Hasi found it important to spend time with them, teach them, and of course tell them the fictitious stories of how neighbors' solar panels were actually the door to Batman's secret lair. That was his style, and he absolutely loved and adored all eight of them. I hope they grow up to know that their papa loved them and how great of a man he was and still is. In 1994, Uncle Max brought home instruments and assigned everyone a position and said, we're starting a band. I can imagine Uncle Max with his quiet, quiet voice and that smile telling everyone. For the next two months, they practiced as many songs as possible to play for their war camp. That's when one of the greatest family reggae bands was born, One Foundation. They brought so much joy to our family to see all of them, Popo, Uncle Johnny, Baby, Lati, Kalishi, commit to being their best, to pushing themselves to do something out of their comfort zone.
and thrive at it as well. It makes perfect sense now. The role Hasi played in the band was the same role he played in our family. Hasi was literally the heart and soul of both. We all know the importance of percussion, keeping everyone on time and setting the tempo. That's the type of guy we're talking about. Truly selfish. And he made sure you knew your importance along the way. He had such a close bond with his siblings and close family. He named, he named or asked his girls, his girl cousins to name all of his daughters. He loved all of his family. He loved all of us so much. And there are, and these are some of the qualities that set Hasi apart from the rest. To me, Hasi was literally my big brother. I was a little crybaby growing up from a young age. He teased me, he made fun of me, he pushed me to be better. He persuaded me to think, he persuaded me to think by eating my boogers, it would give me superpowers. He also shaved my head as a little boy and I thought I was the coolest because I was with Hasi, Baby, and Lato. I looked up to him because he was my older cousin and I still look up to him because he was a family first guy. He could make fun of me or any one of our family members, but if we got picked on by anyone else, it wasn't okay. As I got older, as I got older, me and Hasi spent a lot of time together talking about life and its endless possibilities. And it was during these times our relationship and bond was made stronger. You never knew Hasi was having a bad day. He had a knack for making people he was with feel like they were the most important thing at that moment in time. His heart was pure gold. He never judged anyone and always loved and forgave. He really loved unconditionally. And that was one of the biggest qualities we all will miss. The rough times I remember him going through, he fought and never complained. That just was Hasi. He is and always will be Mr. Forever Young. Rest easy, big bro. No more pain. I know the reunion on the other side has been nonstop laughing, crying, and pure joy. To be reunited with, with all of our with all of our loved ones who have passed on. Please watch over Hagnes and the kids, Hajiman. I miss your face. See you on the side. Say these things, Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs> First of all, I just want to thank our Heavenly Father for bringing, uh, uh, bringing, bringing all of us here together. Uh, I just want to thank the Bishop, the, and the Ward for everything, everything they do, and for Everybody who help out and make this really uh, beautiful day. <clears throat> As you would say, it, it's a it's a good day. But right now, yeah, it's a it's a glorious day. Yeah, I don't. I don't like to get up and talk. I'm a yeah. But today I'm gonna say a little something about Hasi. Uh, <clears throat> Man, all I 
we love her all the time. He's, he's always there for us, for me. Uh, growing up, uh, whenever we go around, uh, me, baby, Blomzy, uh, whenever we get stranded, the first person we think of is Hasi. We, we find a payphone and call him, call Hasi, pick us up. Man. Just, uh, just everything is uh, selfless. He did everything for everybody. Uh, today, uh, uh, the day, uh, the day I was planning to leave, I told her to give me their car. Agnes and Hachi only had one car for their whole family. But he just threw me the key. I told him oh, I'm gonna be gone for a couple of days. But he just he just gave me the key. And that's how Hachi is. And I'd like to say sorry to Agnes. For, man, for I know we took Hachi out of, out of Agnes's time. Uh, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of time. Yeah, man. Yeah, but I just want to say <clears throat> thank you, Hasi, for always being there for me and everybody else too. And. So I say, yeah, your Agnes and the kids, the grandkids, they'll be, uh, yeah, we'll watch over there. And, uh, we'll do everything we can. Yeah, and, uh, and uh, name of Son, Jesus Christ, amen. Man, a few words. We're so lucky you said something today. We usually get just four words from here to here. <laughs> Hasi was loving, very loving. He was giving anything that my sisters and I asked. If he had it, he would give it. Um, functions. Hasi comes. If he didn't have money, Hasi would bring the family and they would clean. They would cook. to him. I still need him. <laughs> my mom says, who's going to come clean my yard? Because that's what Hussie did. Hussie did things for my mom. When there was a cavenga and we would collect money, 
a text will be sent out among the siblings and Hossie, um, we would always leave Hossie out. Betty would always cover his half, his part. She would complain, Hossie is a grown man with grandkids. Why are we still doing this? <laughs> but she did it. She did it because um, we all know how much Hossie loved us. <clears throat> I thank the Lord, I thank the bishop, the counselors for um, for your love, support, for mourning with us. <clears throat> thank everyone who's here. Kasi, you have cousins who couldn't make it today, but they send their love. I thank you, baby. I guess I'm so sorry that you have to continue this journey without him. But we'll do what we have to, Agnes, here so that we can see him again. Agnes, I love you. I love the kids, your grandbabies. If you need anything, Agnes, please call us, send to you as kids. I think um, everyone who's here, family, friends, thank you for being here with us. Hasi wouldn't want us to be sad. He loved life, he loved being around family. <clears throat> Thank you all. And I'm going to say this is Kobe and I'm going to say this first. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I am grateful to be here today. <laughs> to celebrate the life of my brother, my big brother, Husky. <clears throat> this brother means so much to me. <clears throat> And my kids, <clears throat> Hasi is my kid's second dad. Um, <clears throat> growing up, Hasi was always there for us. We were younger. Um, he did so much for us. I have Hasi. Both of my brothers to thank for working so hard with my dad, Yati, along with baby, so that we could have the things that we had growing up, me and my sisters. <clears throat> because they worked so hard. <clears throat> One time, um, And it was a little extra, um, and she ended up in the hospital in the emergency room. Oh. On that day, Hasi told me, I'm gonna tell you what my young man president told me. No matter where you are, 
what time it is, call me and I'll pick you up. <laughs> so many times I, I, I called him. So many times, even, even as an adult, I called him to come and he came. It didn't matter if Agnes didn't want him or they were busy. He dropped everything and came for me and my kids or for my mom and dad or the band. I think a lot of times Agnes didn't even know what we were playing. We, we set the dates up. We tell baby, Galisi, Hussi, make sure your wives know the date. And, and Lucy, not Hussi. Hussi just goes. He always wanted to be with us. With all the family. It's a huge, huge loss for me and my kids. He was there for every important, every important um part of my kids' life. Graduations, baptisms, priesthood. Even though we couldn't give it to them, he was there. Their blessings. I moved to Utah. He came to. He went to Utah too. We came back, he came back. <laughs> My kids are like, how's these kids? He's freed her on Thursday in the parking lot. I was on live and I just waved at him. I got in the car and I told Anne, gosh, I saw Hussie. I wish I would have gave him a big hug. When I see him at Lahi's booth, I'm gonna give him a big hug. She said, me too. We never got that chance because Hussie wasn't feeling good. That day he stayed in the hotel. That was the last time we saw him. <clears throat> Brother, thank you. Thank you. <sighs> thank you for driving me to Utah to take my missionary. <laughs> Thank you for the late night talks, <laughs> the advice, never judging me. <laughs> Thank you for taking my kids to school, picking them up when I couldn't pick them up. <laughs> Thank you, Bishop, for giving him callings. Like call monitor. <laughs> I don't know what it was called, but he would make everybody go to class. <laughs> and I think Ofamwa was the only one who talked back to him. <laughs> Thank you for serving in our ward. He's a good man. Really good man. Agnes, thank you for going to the temple and getting your endowments. That's huge. We promise to do your work. Baby can do your work. Ari can do it. A year from now, we will do your work and your family will be together forever. I'm so grateful for the plan of salvation. <laughs> <laughs> I'm grateful for the plan of salvation, grateful for my parents who raised me in the gospel, no 
matter how far you fall away from the church, you can always come back. I have a testimony of the atonement. I'm grateful that families can be together forever. A year from now when his work is done, I see an Agnes, the children and grandchildren will always be together. I'm grateful that I'll be able to see my brother again. I'm happy that you're with Lottie and bragging about your Nato <laughs> and your royal blue. Betty put blame on you. The pearl jokes that you finally got on your mono mono. Grateful for my Savior Jesus Christ. I know that this is the only true church on the face of this earth. I'm grateful to be a part of it. I am so grateful for the Book of Mormon. I know that it is true. Thank you, Mom and Dad, for raising us in the gospel. Thank you, baby, for sitting here today. Our follower is so handsome. Thank you, Lima. For loving my brother, Hasi, and all that you did to help us. Thank you, family, and everyone that's here. Thank you for your donations. Thank you for helping us bury our brother. Truly appreciate it. We love you all so much. I say these things humbly in the name of my son, Jesus Christ. Amen. That was a lot. Hasi <laughs> and Lati are making fun of you now. <clears throat> I'm the girl version of Hasi. <laughs> when we play in the band, whether I play guitar or bass, it doesn't matter what instrument you play, we all look back to Hasi. We look back to Hasi to know when to change songs. We look back to Hasi to know when we're gonna break. When I hear a song, all I see is Hasi. I see the way he would play. I would see the joy in his face when I hear a song. The day I found out, the first time I listened to Varega, I couldn't control myself. I just broke. This loss paralyzed me. It didn't just paralyze me, it paralyzed my sisters that were so hard to work with. <laughs> I got a call from my oldest cousin. Well, she whipped us in shape. She said, you guys need to get it together. The day is gonna come and you guys aren't gonna have anything ready. Thank you for making this day beautiful. Hasi was so spoiled. Not just by my mom, but he knew how to persuade me. It was persuasive. He just say, man, I, I want to do this, but uh, there's only one problem. I'm a little short. I, I don't really have it. I can't say no. So when it was time to make his day as beautiful as I can, I couldn't say no. Hussie, thank you. Thank you for being the heartbeat of this family. This loss is paralyzing. Whenever I call him, he would answer me. He's the first person to forgive me, no matter what I do. I 
Nasty was such a big mama's boy, she stopped writing him cards because he would tattoo it on, on him. That was the last time my mom gave him a card, a birthday card. Because the biggest mama's boy, the only thing I had over him is I had my mom's middle name. Or I had my mom's name as my middle name. But I love this brother of mine. And it's true, he was selfless. Anywhere Hasi went, whether he put in or not, you would find him at the barbecue grill. You'd find Agnes in the kitchen and the kids all over the place, cleaning up after everyone. It's so hard for me to see these kids cry for their papa. They don't know how, this is the coolest man in the world. He's the funniest person. Our relationship was a little different because me and Hasi would go to parties together. <laughs> I love this man. This is a good man. Kids, I want to tell you something that your dad told me when I was 13. He probably thought I was going to get married like him when I'm 14, so he told me. He said, Betty. <clears throat> When your siblings and their spouse fight, don't get in the middle of it, because at the end of the day, they're gonna make up with their spouse and you can't take back what you say. I carried that with me. Agnes, thank you for letting us love our brother. Thank you for, thank you for taking care of him. Seeing baby up here crushes me. I don't want my mom and dad to bury another sibling. So you guys need to take care of yourselves. I'm the healthiest one. I can't go because if I go, your guys' funeral is going to have nothing. <laughs> I got to stay here to the end. Or just go after dad. The last black one standing. There's three light, three dark. Me, Hasi, and Lati were the dark ones. I don't know. I just want to let you, the kids and the grandkids and Agnes know how much I love you. Mom and dad. My siblings. Baby. Everybody that helped us with this day. I love you guys. Brother. I love you. I didn't want to say goodbye either today. I didn't feel like I was ready. I wanted to fall apart. But these kids, these grandkids that call for their papa. I love you guys, each and every one of you. <clears throat> Thank everyone for coming. I love you guys. Say this season. Rest your man. Amen.
different things. Y'all see the siblings and one foundation for that, mus that beautiful musical number. Uh, we'll continue with our program. We'll now hear from Hasi's uh, parents and uncle. Uh, we'll hear from, first we'll hear from Diola Mualaliava'a, followed would be Mangisi Mualaliava'a and uh, Nehasi Kailahi. After Nehasi Kailahi, we'll have another musical number by Mualaliava'a. Na <laughs> say thank you to everyone and he said how long I say it's all up to you 
Then he said, okay. When the time was up and he was ready to say thanks to the family, he stood there nicely, folded his arm and everything, and he looked up to the family and he said, family, thank you, thank you, thank you. That's it. <laughs> he looked at me and I say, thank you. <laughs> That's the relationship we have. Today I'm looking at him from the day he passed to even before I left the house to come. I haven't passed a day without crying. I cry and stop, but then when I start to think about the little things that he does for me, every weekend I come to visit them. Teardrops. And that's the relations I have with Nehasi. Agnes, I love you and the children. Be strong. We'll be behind. We'll be behind you. Don't forget. If you need anything, even though I can't even walk on my own, I can still help you. With all the things that I said, everything that we have done in the past, all the way up to today, is God plan. I know the gospel is true. I love each and every one of you who come to say farewell to Nehasi. With all the things that I have shared, I This is dedicated to the one who loves me. It ain't the world to us, so young. I had to go. This is dedicated to the ones we love. Who Father would guide 
I pray the Lord my soul to take If my life would end today Living the life I've lived, I've lived it all I've done it all Now I've learned my lesson Always counting every blessing Father, Father Help us to live Help us to see each new day Help us to live a better way Father, Father Help us to see That each minute lost cannot be brought back to us When we learn When we learn The children of my own I'm not living for myself It's them I'm living for When it comes to the ones we love Nothing doesn't matter The love we share with one another Goes beyond compare Lives are taken daily By people today Thank you for that musical, uh, that beautiful musical number. We'll continue with our program. Uh, I don't want to cut off anyone. We are pressed for time. Uh, everyone in this program is important to Hasi. That's why I don't want to cut the program short. So just keep it in mind that we are pressed for time. Uh, if you go a little too long, I might get up and tap you on the shoulder or just turn off the mic. But uh, our program will continue as follows. Uh, we'll now hear from Taufa Hema. Ross Nau, uh, Hiva Sekona, Baby Vaki, and uh, following Baby Vaki, we'll have another musical number by the Vaki family. He's coming. He's right there. Oh, no. Yeah. Is it? Oh, no. Oh, yeah.
name is uh, Tafahema. I'm a good friend of Nahasi. He's also uh, was a part of my way of saying. And uh, if there was one I can defend on, it was him. He's always at every function, always reliable. Even when I didn't ask him for anything, he would be there to do what he needed to do to make it happen. Today I say goodbye to him for one last time. And I know he's going to be there in spirit when he doesn't make it. Nasty effect. Not much to say. Appreciate knowing you in the very short time that I did. I really love you, Mr. Family. These kids are my way to say I miss having them. I'm doing everything and because of you, these kids. My way to say was number one in the high desert. And I greatly appreciate the honor of this man. All of you, of heart. I'd like to say good morning to everybody. Um, start off, uh, thank you, Heavenly Father, for forever blessing us each and every day. I'd like to uh, thank uh, Agnes and the kids for even considering me to be part of the program for Hashi. Um, the first time I moved up here to the high desert, Hashi was uh, one of the first guys that always came and told me, Hey, Toko, you okay, man? Let's come, come join me in my class. And then I'll follow him, and he'll take me to the hallway, and he's like, this is my class. And I was like, oh, all right, I like this class. <sighs> Forever knowing Hashi, for the little time I knew him, he was a good guy. He was always there at every function. And he was the outside man. He was never the guy inside or anything. He was always the guy doing all the foodies outside. I got to know uh, Hashi through my wife. My wife is family with Hashi. Not only that, she's family with uh, Agnes too. And Hashi and Agnes is always at our functions, family function, everything. And I'm always grateful for that. I want to keep it short to let everybody know Hashi's my tokoa. Even though it's, it's not through blood or anything like that, but it's through my wife and knowing him and the kind of person he was. Um, just want to let the uh, kids know, you guys know me, I'm always around, I'm you guys basically neighbor. So if you guys need anything or anything, I mean, just let me know and my wife, we're there for you guys. And um, one funny story is uh, when me and my wife got married, he came up to me and he was like, hey Togo, I got nothing to give you, but I'll give you some advice. And I was like, yeah, what is it? He's like, there's one thing that you always got to know. When your wife and them ask you to do anything or just want something of you, just always say yes. And she'll always uh, say, oh, okay, and she'll leave you alone. And that's been working for me. <laughs> <laughs> Ashley, I love you, bro. We'll all see each other one day. I love you guys. I love your family, Agnes, kids. I feel like I have to meet you. Everybody. That's it. Bottles. Yeah, we'll just have baby come out and see Uncle Hill out there. Man, uh, 
It's not much I can say. Um, it's pretty much heard how much of a wonderful guy Hussey was. And he, uh, he impacted a lot of people's lives. Um, growing up with Huss, and I always wanted to do whatever Hussey did. And Hussey was the first one to go through everything. Um, everything. <laughs> Um, whatever Hasi did, I, I followed right behind him. Um, Hasi was loved by a lot, everyone, and he was pretty much everyone's favorite. Um, I told a story. I told this story before. I mean, Hasi was in junior high, and we were going to Losing Her to meet up with, just to go be with the big homies. They were all at Losing Her at the time, and we were in junior high. We didn't have school, so we got dressed up. We're all blue, just trying to, you know, stand out, trying to show up. And when I was, we were walking to losing our high school, some guy said, hey, hey, what y'all doing over here? And then I turned around and I seen Hansi walking over to the guy. And next thing I see them two shaking hands, I'm like, what the, what's going on over here? Like, just knowing everyone loved Hansi, even those that tried to get us. But that's one thing about Hasi is um, that he was always there for us. He had our backs. And even in high school, we played football together. Freshman year, losing it, that, that was the last time we ever played football. We just went to play football, and then we, that was it. So we just got to our freshman year. Hasi played. He played middle linebacker. I played middle linebacker. He was Will. I was Mike. And just playing with him. I remember one time he got in trouble, so he couldn't play one game. It was a big game. It was against Hawthorne. And I just felt that void, like, man, I can't believe he's not playing next to me against uh, the, the, the other Tongans in, at uh, Hawthorne. Um, I remember how he seen me walking on the field, and he said, hey, man, tear it up, man. Don't let them niggas win. Like, all right, man, I got you, man. Uh, we did beat them, by the way. We beat Hawthorne. Um, yeah, that was the last time we uh, played football together. Um, I remember growing up working with Max Yate. I remember uh, Hasi, uh, Max told us to pick a tool. Hasi grabbed the shovel, I grabbed the wheelbarrow, and we had to move a, a, a load of base to the back. So Hasi was loading the base, I had to go push it. They, we did it for like a long time because it was a lot of bass. And Max asked Hasi, are you tired? And uh, Hasi said, yeah, man, I'm tired. I think Hasi thought he was going to grab the shovel. And Max just said, just switch it over to the other hand and keep going. <laughs> so it was, it was a lot of good memories growing up with Hasi. Uh, we grew learning how to work hard, um, have each other's backs, love. Hasi was loving. Man, I remember when Agnes and Hasi had a, they were managers of an apartment. <laughs>